What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the very first episode of the official Model Cars Houston podcast. Uh, just to preface, this is the very first episode, so expect things to be a little bit bumpy. Not only that, this is also a live podcast, so this is not pre-screened and edited in any shape or form. So whatever you get here is what you're going to get. So kicking off the very first episode, I have a very exciting guest today. His name is Mr. David Houston, and I did not invite him because this is Model Cars Houston. It just ended up working that way. He is no stranger to the world of collecting model cars. He's got a vast collection. He's even dabbled in designing some model cars too, which we can talk about during the interview. But without further ado, let's welcome Mr. David Houston. Hopefully this shows hey, up. James, how are you doing? I'm pretty good, man. What's going on? Oh, nothing. How? What time is it over there? It's a big time oh, difference. Oh, <laughs> uh, this is what? Central Standard. So we're at 11 a.m. I forgot to ask, actually. What time is it over there? Uh, It's 6 p.m. Okay, so you're definitely not on this side of the pond. You're all, you're no, somewhere I'm over here in Europe right now. Oh, I, I just I also wanted to add that if uh, since this is a live video, if anyone has any questions or things like that that you want to ask in the middle, I, I I'll stop. And if it's a good question, I think we should stop and answer it, or maybe just you know what I mean, touch points on it, maybe. Okay, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> but again, we're here for the very first time with Mr. David Houston. Uh, we've got some viewers coming on board. And just to also tell you guys, this is being live streamed on the YouTube channel, which I've got right there at the bottom. But it's also being live streamed through the private uh, Facebook uh, page for Model Cars Houston as well. So those two okay. areas uh, is where it's being streamed. I don't know if I'm always going to do a live. Maybe I may do some pre-screen ones too, just to see how things are versus live and uh, ones that are edited, you know, and just to find out. But just to get into the uh just to get into it with mr houston here tell us a little bit about yourself let's let the viewers know who you are and why are you on a model car houston podcast of all things well i'm here because you asked me but uh <laughs> to be <laughs> i know i started collecting model cars about oh seriously 35 years ago uh, my collection has exploded over the years or decades uh my background is auto design. Uh, I'm a car designer. And so cars have always been a part of my life. Uh, initially, it was trains. And from trains, it expanded in the cars. <laughs> That's a funny story we have to talk about next time. But um, ultimately, the foundation has been, um, you know, when you look at what inspires you from when you're a child, and you catch this automotive bug in your life, and <laughs> what it blossoms and develops from are into uh that right there is your basis for for me as a car collector right right so even as a i guess even when it comes to aftermarket stuff that bug bites people real hard too right like aftermarket yeah. performance stuff putting that stuff on your car man that bug is, <laughs> it's yeah, almost it's i mean it almost drains you as bad as model cars i feel like sometimes maybe sometimes oh, you yeah. gotta pick one or the other yeah with this hobby <laughs> especially with with prices these days you have to decide you know it's how much skin you want to put in the game do you want to spend your money on real cars uh tuning yeah. cars uh model cars yeah. it depends on what your budget is it man. all comes down to that that's funny you mentioned that sometimes i get customers are like man you just dropped that pre-order man but i gotta fix my real car <laughs> i'm gonna have to hold off of that pre-order man or or hopefully it's available you know after a couple of weeks to be able to get one and fix my car so that is actually a real life example of people uh struggling to make that decision sometimes yeah that's always hard too because sometimes you're worried if you don't buy it now is it gonna sell out and what sells out is it gonna be three or four times more expensive when it's <laughs> online again that goes through my head so those yeah. those things are always there you know you're always waiting should i do it now should i wait you know is it going to be cheaper is it going to be a popular item or is it you know you never know the fomo right the fomo yeah yeah FOMO, <laughs> yeah and i think that's important to know because for this hobby you you're dealing with i mean unlike hot wheels where you know there's still a collectibles uh aspect to it but with this hobby you're dealing with things that are a lot less in production you know, you're dealing with things that are limited in quantity. 
so it does definitely instill that sense of man if i miss it now i'm not gonna i'm gonna have to pay for this later and i, I i've seen it in real life people feeling the burn on that sometimes yeah. what double just depending on what it is of course but well that's what just what you said uh when <laughs> something's uh limited or rare that kind of makes the desire a little bit more you know you okay. want it in your collection you, yeah. you know it's not a hot wheels i mean nothing wrong with hot wheels we all grew up with hot wheels or tamika baseline red box mm -hmm. but you know it's something special especially for a collector you want to have this in your collection so that connects a bun with you and other collectors like hey will i have this will i have that and you know it's something to, to just have a discussion about like what we're doing right now you know so you said you've been collecting for how long now? Pardon me? How long have you been collecting? About 35 years. I'm, 35 in, my years. I'm in my 40s. I might 30. look like I'm in my 20s. I'm so my 40s. so you talk, we're going way back. We're going way <laughs> we're going way back to like Hot Wheels era, right? Like mm -hmm. way back. Mm -hmm. Golly, that's so then your collection, how many cars you got in your collection then? Oh gosh. Jesus. Ooh, should I say this online? I, uh, uh, you know, the last time <laughs> okay, I actually did inventory for insurance, about 23,000. Say what? Yeah, in various scales. Everything from 187 scale oh, to one quarter God. scale because we, of course, in design, we had to make our own models and things like this. Oh, so we yeah, yeah, those yeah, as well. yeah. You know, 112. I, I kind of cut back because in recent, I, you know, I have storage units in Europe, uh, America, and not just in one country in Europe because <laughs> it's really space, spatially, it's it's getting to be there. It's like, I keep thinking, should I sell all my cars and buy like one really exotic car? But I think I'll be so bored because you, you can only drive your car every once in a while. Then there's tickets you have to worry about because, you know, you have nice cars, you like to use them, you know? yeah yeah for sure so you have an expansive collection with an expansive mm -hmm. collection you probably have a multitude of brands mixed into oh. that too right <laughs> yes so, so when it comes to brands i mean and this is not i'm not trying to put you on the spot what is your favorite what are your top three brands that you like from those collections wow that's a tough one um if you you know if you break it down the skills let me say it like that okay 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 that's fine yeah so what, 64? In, in 164 scale, I've always been a fan of Tamika. And uh, basically, with their Tamika Limited Vintage and Limited Vintage Nail, they took it to another level. And that kind of like refueled my fire to get back in the 164 scale premium cars. In 2013, mm -hmm. I had actually sold off a vast amount of my 164 scale collection to a friend of mine uh, that was also interested in those cars. And, then when uh, Tamiya, uh, Tamika Limited Vintage released the Mach 3 Supra, I was like, oh, okay. That was like almost my very first car. That's like one of my favorite oh, cars. In real life, yeah, in real life. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, God, it actually, it actually looks good. You know, as a kid, I always wanted one of those as a, as a Tamika. <laughs> and so I bought it. And then I'm like, okay, well, you know, there's also Toyota Crowns. Oh, there's also uh, Nissan Silvias. Oh, man. And, this, <laughs> and then, it boom. Just, boom. Yeah, Tamika, really, you know, their limited, to, uh, limited vintage series really hooked me back in, i say, 2014. And from there, you know, uh, for other 64 scale brands, I love LCD because they take it to a level that no one has done before. They, I mean, the models have like almost Alcatara like interior features if it's a McLaren or or you know or something like this it's got different sections uh if you have a magnifying glass you can almost read what's on I mean this is 164 scale detail it's insane you can almost yeah. see the uh, instrument binnacles and then Hobby Japan came out recently and <laughs> they at first like you know Hobby Japan years. for sure yeah they they yeah. some stuff I, I i would say that maybe depend I, I haven't seen an lcd in person yet mm -hmm. uh, but i would think that the lcd probably has a lot more detail as opposed to the hobby japan yeah. but then you offset it with the fact that hobby japan is putting out some makes and models that really tingle your fancy right like that's the, yeah that's kind of like the give it's like they're not as detailed but man they're making some cool cars though makes and model wise right yeah, they this is basically like they're it's almost like a NL60 or not NL60 um ignition <laughs> model in in scale, uh, you know, on that same line of like niche JDM cars, 
that have not been done that finally deserve their flowers their respect and now they're actually getting that so i'm like yeah okay i'm all in for that what is like the i don't know the price what it will be the price there between like an lcd and like a hobby japan because LCD you know, you're talking about cheaper. more details you know what i mean yeah, but for, I think because LCD is, uh, uh, I, I believe it's a Hong Kong based uh, company in China. Uh, yeah. I believe they're they're Hong Kong based. Their models are actually a lot cheaper. I really? I'd say at least where I source mine, they're about twenty one bucks. So they're they're a little bit cheaper than Hobby Japan, but mm -hmm. they really are offering some amazing detail quality ratio uh, right now uh they're outshining everybody as far as i'm concerned in 164. okay with the exception of gcd from china hong kong uh -huh. as well gcd and does some pretty cool King, stuff though uh, what's that G gcd does put out some pretty cool stuff too oh god they're like like you, know, models, you know what i mean their stuff is like uber detailed i mean highly detailed i think their wheels their wheels turn too right yep yep left to right swivel left to right yeah. some of them have like suspension like the land cruisers and things like you're like whoa and 164 scale and of course they That's all crazy. make 118 scale and 43rd right 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 yeah yeah for sure so so we're talking tomika lcd hobby japan that's your top three yeah those are my top three for sure so when it comes to those, I mean, again, a lot of cars. Wait, Auto World. Let me throw Auto World in there. They're also. Oh. Let me give the let's give the Americans some credit. Auto <laughs> World. And, yeah, let me let me go ahead. I don't want to leave them out. Auto World. Yeah, Auto they're World. making Japanese cars though, right? Right now, aren't they? Yeah, uh, under cars? their line there, and uh, what's it? Was it right now? If I look right here. Uh, <clears throat> them and uh, and Johnny Lightning. They're basically the same company. Got the, you know, the, to make cars lady? like this stuff that i remember from my childhood that i absolutely love that kind of inspired me to even become a car designer you know what, so what was that I, what was that make a model what was that fair lady that was a 1980 yeah, uh, that one is a this one is a 1984 uh let me try to show it Datsun yeah. Nissan oh, yeah, 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 yeah. ZX. remember right. in 84 the car was Datsun and nissan in 85 it became nissan yeah so in America, Auto remember World, they were doing a transition in the 80s between yeah. Datsun and Nissan. And that was the year I remember going to the dealership with my grandfather, trying to convince him <laughs> to buy one. I'm like, please buy one of those. Uh, and <laughs> I remember Datsun Nissan at the back of the vehicle. So Auto World doing, uh, I guess, how is their detail compared to some of these overseas brands? You know, I think they're doing a pretty good job. You know, they're not exactly uh, LCD level, but for me, best, you know, bang for the buck, they're you know they're pretty good they're not on okay and i also let me give mini gt some credit and, and glenn and what he's doing <laughs> I mean, you know i guess i can't say i have a top three i have probably a, a top 10 but mini a gt yeah yeah there's, too many, there's too many brands to narrow it down to three maybe yeah, yeah, exactly man exactly. that's the problem yeah yeah mini gt let's give glenn some credit for that because his the work he's doing is absolutely amazing the prices that he has coming in absolutely fantastic in that that right there is a good way to get someone into the hobby it's not gonna break your bank oh introductory yep yep exactly it's a good way to get people who want something you know I, they collect hot wheels they're like you know what i want a little bit more detail and a little more accuracy yes. Yes. and they can just kind of roll into that and and roll with it i mean i'm really happy with my mini gts you actually kind of see that in the forums and in groups and things like that on facebook people find out about mini gt and they talk about their background a little bit and oh yeah i came from hot wheels but man i found this brand called mini gt and mm -hmm. i'm almost about to put my hot wheels away that type of thing oh <laughs> don't yeah. get me wrong I, I i've converted a few hot wheels collectors and mm -hmm. and most of them are keeping their rare stuff you know like they're mm -hmm. really high-end collectibles they'll keep that but some of these mm -hmm. you know some of the ones that are just commons they're just like what am i doing yeah i miss you know uh and i believe it was two I can't remember, maybe 2003, 2004. I was at the Nuremberg Toy Fair in Germany. And uh, I met the guy who was in charge of uh, Hot Wheels, a uh, elite brand, I believe at that time. Very nice guy, gave me his business card. And at that point, they were get, doing giveaways when you walk into the, the show. I was uh, invited actually by Auto Art. Uh, Jimmy Yee invited me to the show. Uh, and basically, when I walked in, they had given me an Enzo, and I looked at it, and the detail on this for, I think it was their Elite Series, Hot Wheels Elite, 
I can't remember, but they had a really nice range of highly detailed 164 that you could park right next to a TLV and it would look just about, you know, on the same level. And so I really? don't understand why they, yeah, where did that brand go? What, what happened there? Because they should have kept that up. Oh, that was really good. Man. That's interesting. Hot Wheels had that. Yeah, one sixty four scale, exact one sixty four scale. Yeah, yeah, not three inch. Not the sixty scale nonsense. Wait, so Hot Wheels just recently announced that they were going to be putting out something called Elite sixty four again. I don't know if it's the same oh. name as it was before, okay. but a little bit better detail, but not as good as maybe what you're saying, which is kind of confusing oh. for me. But interesting. Yeah, if you go maybe they, on, maybe they came into the game too early with that, and people were just like, "Man, I don't want that. I'm just gonna stick with my one dollar ninety nine cent Hot Wheels." Yeah, you know, it's kind of almost like mini champs. What they had done too. Remember, they were also doing some <clears throat> excellent one sixty fours, and people didn't buy them, but now they're coming back. And so yeah. when you look, you're like, "Wow, mini champs is coming back," and you're so happy. I have, I believe, I have all of their one sixty four scale stuff, and it's it's like on. Uh, Beyonce level at that time, Beyonce 164 skill, that detail. So I was like, wow, that's pretty good. I didn't know Mini Champs did 64 skill. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. They do some really good. Well, uh, they, I know they do a lot good. of 43, right? They yes, a lot. Of yeah, a lot of my uh, uh, <laughs> quick, quick touch point on 43 scale from your experience. Mm -hmm. 43 mm -hmm. scale doesn't seem like a very popular scale here in the States. In Why Europe, do you think that is? I. Like I can't I get know, people you know, to bite. I can't get people as to bite an American. Food. You know, to answer that, as an American, it's it depends on where you are. I think that we as Americans see smaller things as toys, and forty uh, third scale cars they aren't they aren't cheap. And the companies that used to sell them, like Eric Wader and Associates, those companies have kind of like gone away, and. Um, you know, I'll, I'll let me go back to this. Living in Michigan, working in the auto industry, there's this awesome store called AutoZone on Woodward. It's now, I believe it's called Pestiners. Um, they always have a plethora of 143rd scale cars there. And they had the most beautiful displays. And while I was in college, I would go there once in a while to buy magazines and, and some model cars. And I just really got into it. The scale was so how do you say it was it was larger than 164 scale but highly detailed and exactly. yep but you know and i think at that time they were about 30 bucks each 20 25 30 bucks each and i think that um outside <laughs> of places like michigan and really auto-centric uh uh cities people don't relate those things as collectibles they just see them as toys and then they see them as expensive toys and you know going back to your question and, and i think they don't appreciate it here in europe 164 uh, sorry 143rd scale uh they're very popular because of space space uh space. Space. you you have room to store these you know they don't have as large homes as we have back in the u.s and so um yeah that that's a factor i think also around the world internationally uh you have to look at the scale of things so 164 scale becoming premium has really shot off around the world speaking to a friend of mine in china who gives me a lot of inside information he <clears> says <throat> right yeah. now he said this to me about three days ago dave 164 scale is really the hottest scale i knew it was on fire but he sure. he confirmed it he says really that's he said people here in china are buying also premium 164 scale you see more and more of it coming 18 yeah. scales pop it's almost like uh 164 scale is uh taking over and replacing 143rd it's either 164 or 118 scale and kind of like everything in between is kind of like yeah yeah some you know <laughs> Sometimes people, well, sometimes the 43 scale can get almost as expensive as an 18 scale too, depending on what brand you go with. You know, brands like Makeup, Ignition. I mean, you're talking yes. 200 plus for an 18 scale. Given, yeah, it comes in a nice, neat package and it looks fire. Mark yeah, it depends on what you want. For instance, like Mach, this is uh, actually the yeah. uh, same company pretty much, I believe, as Hobby Japan. Mach, yep. uh, Mark yeah, they, they'd be selling under the same thing, yep. And, you know, 
it depends. Like that was a Honda Legend Coupe, or in America we call it Acura Legend Coupe, first generation. Oh man! You, you look at you know I make an exception on forty thirds. I don't. I I try to avoid buying them these days, but a large amount of my collection are actually one forty third. And um, basically, I'm really picky. I decided to limit it to only uh, cars that I really love, cars that are very niche that haven't been done before. And I don't have an other skills. I'll buy that in forty third skill. Okay, so when it comes to a little bit talking a little bit more about your collection, mm -hmm. you buy you're buying more niche. Like wow, they made a car that. Mm -hmm. Like how do you buy the cars that you buy when it comes to your collection? For my collection, um, <clears throat> I've always been a big fan of JDM. JDM um, stuff. Okay, yeah. so you narrowed it down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always, I mean, I, I also love uh, um, American and European cars, but I'm really specific. But I guess the the fact is, I always like what I couldn't have, what I couldn't see all the time. And, you know, growing up oh, in the U.S., okay. you didn't always see a Nissan Leopard or a Toyota Soar or, and I'm like, what's that? And I remember, I think I was watching a film with my folks and it, it was some movie that was happening in Hong Kong. And there's this beautiful big Toyota. I'm like, what is this thing? For me, it was beautiful. Uh, this is like <laughs> uh, mid eighties. And I'm like, what is that? It's, it's like bigger than a Cressida. It looks like it's bigger than a Cressida. And, but it's got like the silver glass C pillar. I'm like, what is that? And I found out later it's a Toyota crown. And I'm like, oh. and if you look in the background over here, that's one of my favorite. I mean, that is really one of my rock foundation favorite JDM cars. I know it looks old. It looks like a box, but you know what? I love that. That's my childhood right there. You know, it's just, it's, it, that, that just pulled me into it. And so I went to the library and started looking. I found a book on Japanese cars. And from there, every time one of those books came out, I started checking them out and I found out more and more like, oh, a Honda City. And also I was collecting a lot of Tamiya kits. I was building and collecting. I, I started off as a kit collector more than a model car collector. Model cars. You mean uh, like plastic model kits? Plastic oh yeah. model kits? Yeah. I, yes. I was in the contest. I mean, everything. Yeah. I, I won a couple of contests. I was really into that. So, you know, Tamiya, Tamiya and Tamika, I always thought they were the same company. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it, it, pardon me? No, 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 no. I was just laughing. <laughs> yeah, they were they were just kind of like uh, following the same lines, you know. Yeah, like if uh, sure. Tamika made a um, a, a Nissan uh, Bluebird, then uh, Tamika would make one. It's like oh, in the same color. So I always thought they were like the same company. You know, as a kid, I didn't know the difference. Not so much. So when it comes to you were speaking a little bit about your background, you were talking about designing stuff. Mm -hmm. What do you have? What were you designing, and what do you got for us in terms of? model cars is uh, model aspect? cars yeah is there any oh, aspect wait, real of cars or model cars mo mo model cars model cars because you say oh, you're okay, yeah, cars yeah, yeah. well, you well know, i guess like, you, could, you could touch on the real life stuff a little bit too if you want but yeah it depends you know i work for various companies uh, uh and ultimately because of working at various automotive companies uh <clears> in 20 <throat> in late 2017 i was on a platform and I, uh, I noticed a model and I'm like, something's a bit off about that model. And I made a comment about that particular uh, model. And the guy who actually is one of the owners of the company contacted me, says, hey, uh, because another friend who actually worked for that company <laughs> said, well, you know, Dave is a car designer and he actually used to have a Z32 300 ZX twin turbo. So of course he knows what that car is. So he could immediately spot when something's off. And basically, um, LS Collectibles Top Mark asked me yeah. to work for them. Now, I have a lot of other clients uh, that, and so for me, I was like, I had to uh, debate, do I have the time to do this? Because for me, accuracy and details really matter as a collector. And I, I don't, I wanted to do justice to what I do because that's also my reputation. So I said, well, uh, what did you want? And they said, well, you know, we would like for you to work for us. And uh, what could you do to help us? We know you have a design background, um, automotive design background. Can you please help us figure out, uh, you know, how to get things right shape-wise, accuracy? 
And so uh, I took on a project manager job for them with regards to developing uh, accuracy. Uh, but this is a, a side job for uh, making sure that their models look as realistic as possible for the projects that I worked on myself. Mm -hmm. Now, there's other managers that had different projects, but as far as I was concerned, I I gave them the stipulation that I would work for them if you will do certain cars that haven't been done before. My list new, included, new to market, new to market stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I have a slight marketing background because of design. So I wanted to make sure there's a lot of stuff that gets overlooked. Uh, one of the projects was uh, I said, well, you know, one car has never been done. And one of my favorite cars ever. Toyota Celica. Supra. Oh, man. that thing is beautiful. The Mark II. How, how many colors came out of that? Oh, gosh, I can't remember. I, and they actually let me pick the colors, too, interior, exterior wise. But we have done so many versions. I can't remember what's released and what what hasn't haven't been released. But yeah, basically. Um, this this vehicle here was uh, really fundamental in my childhood. I, I love Toyotas. I've always loved Supers. I, I didn't become a, a super fan with the Mach 4. I've always liked that vehicle. And um, that was just, I wanted to make sure that that car didn't get overlooked in 118 scale. And now it's funny. Everyone's uh, 164 scale. That's an actual Celica Supra, not just a Celica XX. They're being done. It's, it's so funny. Also, the Starion. When I said, "Please, we have to do a wide body Starion," and that a way you body, can yes. also market this as a conquest TSI as well. You can, you know, do more than that. And another vehicle was the eighty eighty four uh, Datsun Nissan three hundred ZX Turbo. And uh, from there, it just it went. And they like, yeah, but you worked you worked at Mercedes Benz, so can you do? I said, well. <laughs> You need to talk about uh, talk to Mercedes, and they said, "Well, just uh, you know, go ahead and we'll handle that part." And so um, they were like, "Well, what's missing?" I said, "Well, you know, one of my favorite cars has been the SEC." So I said, uh, "If you guys can work something out where I'm allowed to do the SEC," I said, "Why don't we do a, a Lorenzo version of it?" And they went for it, and so uh, that was one of the, I believe, one of the first European ones that we had done. Uh, I, mean, I, I, th I think a lot of these niche makes and models actually appreciate having a die cast of their platform, right? Because nobody else was showing them love before. Yeah. Exactly. You know, Hot Wheels wasn't showing them love. They tried yeah. their best. I mean, most of the brands are going to go. I feel like most of the brands are going to go after those cars. That's like the, the fan favorites, right? Like NSX, Supra, RX-7, FD, right? But like FCs, yeah. what about the uh, Savannahs? Yeah. Make uh, cars of those. Yeah. Speaking of survival, coincidentally, man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. That's there it is. is. I brought, man. look. I, that's beautiful. I brought that's this beautiful, down man. on accident. I thought this was the, the 300ZX, but I think I put that in storage. So <laughs> this, this is a RX7. Now, this is a that's GT, uh, a GTX, uh, Japanese spec, the yep. uh, Supra, yep. Celica yep. Supra was a US spec. But sure. for me, I was like, you know what? This hadn't been done. Now, this was before ignition, by the way. This was yeah. before ignition. Same with the Starion. That was before because yeah. I pushed those cars because I knew they were missing. And it's so funny to see ignition doing the same type of cars now. And there were so many cars that ignition are doing right now that I had suggested that we didn't do. Like, for instance, Stagia. Things like that. I'm like, why don't we just say, oh, well, they beat us to that. You know? Everyone, so, I feel like everyone's trying to make a Stagia now. Yeah, I know. And I was trying to yeah, make a Stadia the, uh, three yeah, years somebody, ago. Three years somebody, ago. One of the brands trying to make it with an R34 front end, too. Okay, a front okay, front end swap. Yeah, front okay. End swap things. It's getting crazy. Yeah. You know, some of those brands, I feel like some of these brands, they just, they're making, they, again, it's gone. I'm going back to the thing where they're making makes and models and setups that those the customers really appeal to, too, right? Because they yeah, want to be able to you, sell them. You have to. Because if you think about, car you know that's the difference i would say like probably about 30 years ago 40 years ago you know you had people who were casual car fans they're like oh well you know i want a 57 chevy or a pontiac gto or a corvette or you know and that's cool but 
now you see this more uh in, entrenched it's like really niche like well no i want a uh trueno uh it has to have uh, uh watanabe wills uh and so they're making it you know of course like that's that. what they want but but even yeah. with setups like that it's I, I feel like it's it's because of what you've seen so many times you know you're just used to that setup yeah yeah so it just becomes like a fan door, favorite right? yeah I it's really you know it, it's really funny because uh I believe the Fast and the Furious franchise really fueled this uh and as well as the video game Gran Turismo in what fact, the hobby or what no, no yeah the hobby because you know uh I'm gonna discuss a conversation I had with uh Jimmy Yee in I believe 2002 uh at the at the toy fair he invited me every year until I had moved from Germany but uh basically he was saying at that time, I guess a lot of younger people weren't into the hobby. And I said, well, why don't you link it up with the video game Gran Turismo? And I remember oh, he said something no. about licensing. But then all of a sudden, I see that he did get the licensing. <laughs> and he did get it. And I'm like, yeah. I said, you know, JGGT cars, you know, uh, Japan Grand Touring Car Champions stuff. Nobody's done that in one team skill. Now, he did release it, but a lot of the stuff initially was sealed. And then later, he, you know, a few years later, he did release ones that opened up. But, you know, cars like that, I gave some suggestions of uh, cars that it would be interesting to see done. Like, yeah. you know, and, you know, and it kind of ties back in the Gran Turismo and things like this. This is all stuff that people can say, well, you know what? I want a model of that car because I played that on the video game. You know, yep. things like this. Yep. That's how you get people into it. You know, For sure. when it comes, since you know a little bit about the uh, the the uh, the the model car building side of things, one of the questions I often get is, customers will always be like, "Hey, I've got such and such make a model. Can you make me a model car? Can you know? Can they make a model of that car?" What would I tell this person without being a offensive like i don't want to be look man nobody cares about that car i don't want to say oh. that and that's not the way to look at it either because it's actually a car that people might like mm -hmm. until you make it until somebody makes it because nobody knows that a model car you know that nobody's making it or nobody's paying attention to it what mm -hmm. can i tell these people be like look man it's really tough to make that car you know and why would it be you know what i'm trying to say like i don't know of uh, nissan Jeep. Well, i mean if they want to pay you for <laughs> if they if they I would tell them if you want to pay for the mold and the licensing, go for it because then we can make it That's because it. making, you know, it's all about profit. Um, I found out in about 2005 that it costs about 250,000 per mold to make a 118 skill and a 112. They cost about the same and die cast um, to make a resin is a lot cheaper. I just found <laughs> out uh, about five years ago that those are about, 15,000 per mole. But the problem is with those, the more you use them, the more they warp. So you kind of have to make a few moles with resins. Yeah. If, you, yeah. if you ever notice, you'll see some resin brands, the new products look really good, but as the yeah. product goes on, they kind of start deforming and shape. I'm like, mm. you know, that doesn't work. And that's because some of the of newer stuff too, you think? Some of the newer stuff be doing that too? Yeah, you know, I don't want to call out any brands, but I've seen it on some pretty popular, mm -hmm. um, famous brands in particular and does that matter people, if you put it under the sun or you know what i mean like do you have to keep it climate controlled maybe yeah i i keep everything in climate on. controlled storage because i understand what zinc pest is and uh i've had uh, a problem I, I left some stuff in one state that was too hot for one summer and stuff got ruined but with resin i'm not sure because um i think that it's you know it's been on the market for a while but it's, it's still relatively new in the vast quantities that's out now you know uh so with die cast you know you have to keep it away from the sun you know you need to keep it a climate control environment you know you need to have uh you know uh, salt packs near the product to keep dampness away with resin oh, i'm not man. really sure uh because it's what a, a form of a, of a, a chemical plastic so right. i'm not really sure what happens with that over time I, I you know but i would assume that if you leave it out too much it might warp in the sun so you probably don't want to keep it in direct sunlight as well i have no clue to be really i, I guess i guess you know with a hobby like this that's up and coming we're we are all testing it right now 
Yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah, exactly. maybe <laughs> like, either now or a year from now. We're, if anything's going down that's wrong, we're gonna notice it. And be like, man, what is going on with this resin? Yeah, <laughs> but so far, knock on wood, everything's been good. Uh, yeah. You know, some of the stuff I keep in cases. Some of the stuff I just keep it unboxed and put it on the shelf just to see what it would do. Like I, I've got some test pieces running right now. I even did a video on a 64 scale resin from Ignition. Oh. I left it out in the sun. Texas heat. Texas heat. The whole day, 24 hours, night and day, nothing happened. Oh, wow. And, that, like, and the humidity I, down where you are as well. The heat. I mean, I'm talking about all that was hitting it. Nothing happened. I was I was actually surprised. Okay. Maybe so we maybe got lucky on that one. Maybe, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know, man. I was actually surprised. I thought maybe things will start warping. The, 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 the window would start caving in. The glue oh, yeah. started coming undone. You know what I mean? How they put the glue around the windows. None of that. I was like, holy cow. Maybe they figured you it out. On, you know, I don't know. Yeah, right. You hit on something right there. The windows. I hear more complaints about that than anything else. Yeah. People are like, oh, but why does it have flimsy yeah. windows? And that right there is kind of like a, a pet peeve for me too with resins. I'm like, um, I guess because resins actually do expand and contract, if you put plastic windows in there, then things can crack or yeah. become loose. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't know that. Um, I learned that from LS. They they told me that. They explained that to me. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> that oh, was yeah. something new I found out. And then the and then the window starts lifting up, right? Like the yeah. so it comes undone and starts lifting up. I mean, you could. I mean, I could. You could still fix that. That's fixable. You could work with That's that. That's annoying, especially yeah. if you pay a lot of money for something and then you have to fix it. And yeah, there's some really nice premium brands that make models, and they, you're like. <laughs> That thing costs 600 euros or 600 bucks and the window is lifting off of it. And you're like, huh, you know, and for I something know. like Ferrari or a Lamborghini, it looks really bad when you see you know, something that organic. Lifting. That's funny you mentioned that, man. One of the things that I tried to instill into the collectors, whether they're new, especially, I mean, especially the new, my bad, especially the new is like, look, Yes, I understand you paid $300 for that model, but look, stuff is going to happen. This is not like a perfect world where the spoiler is going to stay in place when they ship or the window doesn't start coming up or a window falls or a wheel falls off. Exactly. It's going to happen to somebody. Somebody's yeah. going to get their card pulled, right? Yes. All, all, you know, 100 people buys it, 98 are going to be no issue. But the two people, unfortunately, one of them was you. And these are just some of the things that we have to handle as collectors. Either fix it, talk to the talk to the people you bought it from, whatever, and get it resolved for sure. Yeah, it's, it's that, just the reality, right? It's just the reality of collecting. It is. It's always going to happen because you know <laughs> there's always odds with regards to things like that. But you know the, that's where good customer service comes in. You know, for sure. if you have excellent customer that's service, that's part. Yep. That's that's all you have to do. Like, look, I have a problem. Can you please help me fix it? And go from there instead of uh, you know having a tantrum. And, and, over. I mean, nine <laughs> times out of ten, these are all hand built, right? Like most of yeah, all most of the time, like assembly With line hand built. Mm -hmm. So people Those are, are putting it together by hand. I mean, if that one person didn't put enough glue on there, then pff, that one model yeah. is going to be. I mean, it might yeah. make it through QC because it had <laughs> just enough. Yeah. Once you put it in the box, it sees some heat. It goes come to the U.S. It'll come undone. It's like God dang it. Like, what is one this? Of How does that happen? Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then you have to pray or uh, and hope that the the, uh, the package people aren't playing oh. gorilla today and throwing things across. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, just, see, th those are like uncontrollable, right? Like you can't do yeah. anything. But see it. again, that's where it comes to good customer service. If you yeah. pack everything well, uh, you know it's like the whole egg and a uh, rubber band experiment in in grade school oh, oh, that we had in middle school, oh. where you had to make sure the egg didn't get broke. You right. kind of have to put that in the play, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. So we so we talked about your collection. We talked about you being a designer for some model cars that people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. Now, I've seen you do a lot of, uh, I guess, maybe like reviews and stuff on forums. Uh, what's this forum or message board that you're active on? What is this all about? Well, uh, I'm a moderator on Diecast Exchange. Okay. And How long have they been around? Oh, gosh. Oh, I joined them in 2013. I'll say it like that. Okay. Uh, I believe 2013 or 2012. And I've been a moderator, I think, since 2015. I believe oh, 2015. Wow. 
You've been them for um, a They asked me one year. They said, okay, we, you know, you always have a good um, connection with people. So yeah. would you please uh, take the time to uh, to do this with us? And so I was like, sure. You know, it's my hobby. It's the passion of mine. I don't mind doing it when I have time. Yeah. So I moderate. But um, I don't know. I, you know, I don't actually know how many years they've been around. I started with scale18.com back in... 1997 or 98 i can't remember it was like i remember when i first got a home computer it was that, that was time. uh like a forum too yeah yeah skill 18.com uh yeah yep scale 18.com yep and that was like where i met a lot of my friends uh in fact uh i met quite a few people in real life from that forum uh and uh some even some uh guys who are now who wanted to be car designers connected me connected with me there when they were kids and then they ended up meeting me later in real life and uh when i was oh, wow. in germany and uh basically I, um i kind of guided them and now they're actual car designers so it's just things like that you know the hobby brings a lot of people together for sure it for really sure. does so it's so on the on, on dicax exchange are you are you uh, doing car reviews and stuff on there? Be besides moderating, like, what do you do on there? Like, yeah, I, I usually, you know, for instance, if I get something and it's interesting enough for me, uh, oh. and if I have enough time, I have a plethora of models. I'd say at least 60 that I need to actually edit because I'm, I want my <laughs> images to look, I want my images to look good. You know, it's, it's sure, all sure, about sure. me. I put my, uh, yeah, yeah. my, um, watermark on there so i yep. definitely want my images yep. to look good yep. so uh i have a backlog right now but i will try to do an in-depth review of what what the model has to offer you know the quality but also i try to write something in about the actual uh car itself you know so why i bought it what it means to me because i try to buy cars that mean something to me you know yeah my collection is from the heart and oh, you, actually, you, mean, you mean you're collecting on passion and not because you're going to scout people? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not there. Not, for not me. because, yeah, not because the value is going to go up. Or, yeah, you know, you know some people, some people oh, collect man. like that. And man, I'm just like, no, nah, that's not the right way to collect anything, right? Yeah, you, you see a lot of people you say that. You think it's going to go up. And even on that site and that platform, people are like, how much, you know, it's, it's unfortunate that like stuff that I bought for like 59 bucks way back in uh 2003 is now worth a thousand yeah. you know but you have to keep things in good condition and the package and everything has to be right you right. know it's fortunate and sometimes if i get bored i will sell something at what market value is now you know Make the fun money. of the project but when it goes back to uh um to what you're doing as far as what is your passion and your motivation for me it comes back to what i feel and ironically I was working in Detroit or in Dearborn. Uh, I was contracted to work for Ford and, and they had me in their advanced design and then they put me in Lincoln. And basically um, I was a person who was in the cars initially from the seventies upwards. And after working with a modeler who became a really good friend of mine, a clay modeler um, and going to his house. Now he has a vast collection. Oh God, he probably has more than me. Um, but after uh, after going to his place and seeing the amazing stuff he had from the 60s, uh, prototype models and stuff like this, I started getting, and also living in Michigan at that time, you really start noticing classic cars. And I just started getting this passion for Americana and Motown. And I started <laughs> just really just expanding my, you know, at that time there weren't a bunch of uh, JDM anyway. So right. I just started expanding out to, you know, Ford Fairlanes, uh, you know, uh, Chevrolet uh, Impalas, uh, you know, just different types of cars that I probably would have looked at, but probably wouldn't have purchased. I, I understood what they meant. It's something started to register with me and that passion. You also have to do this, especially if you're designing, you have to really get into what you're doing. Damn. Because you want to make sure that you're doing the best you can to satisfy someone who's going to be looking at buying this thing potentially or also to sell it to your, your managers so that your design might win so that you can have something picked or, or even if it's a door handle or a hubcap or the whole car. It's always something there that has to bring you back to a passion about it. You want to do the best you can with everything. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, I think a lot of those details is what sometimes 
when it comes to this level of collecting, you know, leaving, I mean, pers me leaving Hot Wheels now, looking for the better, bigger things when it comes to collecting. I mean, I still want to collect something. And so here I am. If this didn't even exist, none of us would be doing it. We maybe we might still be collecting Hot Wheels, right? Who knows? <laughs> But you know what? I want to give Hot Wheels some credit, you know, because I find that a lot of us are quite dismissive about Hot Wheels. And, you know, if you look at the whole story of Mattel and how Hot Wheels came about, you know, it's especially with us being American, it's fundamentally part of our culture. Uh, and I just want to make sure that when I look at Hot Wheels, I don't want to, and Hot Wheels collectors, I don't want to say, oh, they're Hot Wheels collectors because I'm a Hot Wheels collector. I, I still have, I have a huge collection of Hot Wheels and Matchbox <laughs> as well. Uh, but Oh, so that's part that, of that 25,000? That's part of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I have models from, yeah, for, I'm, not, I'm not at 25 <laughs> yet. But, uh, but um, as far as getting, getting to the point of where I started from, I want to give them credit. I started with Hot Wheels. I started with Tamika, like baseline, and I started with Matchbox and Corgi as well. Corgi. Um, so if it weren't for them, then all these other guys coming along or these companies today, they wouldn't even be here because they set the they set like you know the base from there, and it just only went up from that point. You know, foundation. Yeah. Yep, that was their foundation. No, 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 most definitely for sure. Respect out the Hot Wheels. Yep totally respect for them but yeah i understand i just uh would like to see more i would like to see the elite 64 scale back uh because i really loved that series that they had i mean i in fact i think i have uh, one of the baja trucks one of the toyota but i forgot to bring it out from them and i'm like wow this thing was good i mean it's detailed and i'm just like i mean they hire wheels, the best people as well how, yeah i mean how wheels has to know that this stuff exists i mean they're not oblivious to what's going on with like you know 64 hobby japan and things like that Maybe because they're just so busy with the stuff that they've been doing. It's like, mm -hmm. man, we don't have time. We'd have to create another department. You know what I mean? Like, we'd yeah. have to create another brand name under the umbrella just to have stuff at this caliber of level. And we have to have a market and compete with these other guys that have been doing it for a while. What can we bring to the table that's going to be good? I mean, we got the name. Everybody knows yep. us. I'm sure there's some oh. people in that company that has some passion to do that. It just depends. You know, it's like Tamika. I always put like Hot Wheels and Tamika kind of on the same level. It's like, um, you know, we were the other day we were discussing about Tamika, you know, charging uh, the amounts they charge compared to Hobby Japan. But yet Tamika expects us to stick mirrors on and spoilers on and things like this. And I'm like, you know, it's kind of annoying at exact 164 scale because even though I have an art background. You really need a microscope sometimes, and you really need to be precise. So just think about the average Joe that doesn't, or the average Jane yeah. that's collecting these yeah. items, and they have to try to figure out <laughs> where to glue something, and there's no no pin point to put. You're like, huh? Those but bears thing, are not going on. Yeah, they're not going on. They're no. staying in the package. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know, I now I do that. I, I glue mine on, but then if they fall off, you're like, oh crap. There's one missing, and then there's one. So should I take it off or, or just buy another spare car and leave? You know, all this stuff goes through your head. I've done that, you know, with the Ferrari stuff because I oh. want to make sure that. <laughs> okay, a quick quick question about the TLVN. What do you use to stick those mirrors on? What do you what kind of glue are you using for that? I use a quick drying glue, one of those uh, second glue. But what I do is I already mask off the area around with tape. Mm -hmm. So that I don't get any over uh, glue over an area and a quick accelerant so that once you stick it there, it's, it's on. And one oh, other thing, yeah. I use a Molotov chrome marker to put a mirror face on all of mine if I'm going to stick the mirrors on. Because they don't have nothing. No, I'm like, okay, they could also do that for the money that we're paying. They, they yeah, should do that as well. True. That's you true. Know? That's a good point. Yeah, I never noticed about that mirror, but now that you mention it, I, I recall that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you were you said you've been to a toy fair. That's like a diecast expo, or what is that? Yeah, yeah. In uh, Germany, uh, there's in the Germany. Nuremberg toy fair. Yep. Like all the brands and, come out to show off their stuff. Yeah, it's international. Like you know, it's international toy fair. It's really one of the, the biggest. I mean, you need like uh, if you really want to see everything, you probably need a week. Um, uh, and you oh, know, goes on that long. Said, yeah, I mean, it's really large. There's fireworks show afterwards. Everything is really huge. It's really mega sized. Uh, but, and you definitely need comfortable walking shoes, <laughs> walking shoes as well. But um, 
basically you have to be a, a, a dealer or have a store or be invited. I'm always, at that time, I was always invited by, uh, Auto Art actually used to invite me because I uh, initially helped them on a project when someone else wasn't helping them. Man, do you think we would benefit over here in the States with a show like that? Like, I, I'm not saying like- They a have it in New York. Diecast show. They have Where it in New that? York. Like a diecast show? Uh, no, like in Michigan right now, tomorrow, there's a big uh, show where people are selling things. I don't know, it depends. I, you know, I don't know what the psyche is with collectors uh, stateside anymore because, you know, video games uh, are very popular, especially a lot of the um, the ones are active where you can use, uh, you know, uh, accessories and uh, things like this, where it's kind of like interactive with gargles and stuff and, you know, all, all VR the VR stuff, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, VR stuff. And so... I don't know if that's where the passion has gone. And I think, as a, let me just go back and say it like this. Fundamentally, as a society, if you think about societies that are very successful engineering-wise, they value toys. Think yeah. about Germany. Think about Japan. Think about China. All these countries that uh, look at toys as a function of engineering, how things work, yeah. They tend to have really good engineering. And the U.S. really also had done that in the past. But now we outsource a lot of stuff to other countries. And um, like I say, everything is moving towards video games. So basically, you're missing a generation of engineers. And the engineers will later, you know, you can say maybe they're interested in toys. But then maybe that guy might or, or, or a lady might end up being an astronaut or designing rocket booster parts you never know all this stuff is coming from a basis somewhere and you don't see that uh in some societies and the societies that respect that um you see their societies their education level uh going higher with regards to that as far as those type of jobs mm -hmm. those type of of positions where you can look to that country and say look i want a good engineer while well, i look at this place or look at that place you know yeah yeah for sure do you understand what I'm saying? Do you get yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got yeah. you. Um, man, believe it or not, we're at 50 minutes. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> so, Time. That's no, so I, I, I mean, I want to again. This is first episode, so I don't know how long these are gonna go. I was thinking an hour, maybe if it's crazy stuff going on, an hour and a half. Uh, but uh, maybe uh, kind of land the plane and close things out. Okay. What do you think about this T Pain debacle? <laughs> Have you seen? Oh, that? you mean the the rap on his yeah, car? The rap on his car and stuff like that. Oh, what do you think man. about that? Just just to, just to talk about some current event stuff. No, not not diecast related. I actually, actually, it is diecast related. I'll tell you why after you. Okay, yeah, I would be really think. upset, you know, because if you have a car that you really like, I think that's an S14. I had an S13. I think that was an S14. Yeah, yeah, right? S14 with yeah. a uh, Rocket Boss, Rocket Bunny kit or something like that. Oh man, and then the. You know, someone asked, was that a joke? I'm like, I don't know. I had seen it, but if it's not a joke, I'd be quite upset because it is, I think he said, what, 15000 or 10000 I can't remember what yeah, he spent. Money spent. Yeah. And I'm like, man, it's like they trashed his car. And he said that the, the people went to see him to promote it. He has a platform. I use that. For sure. I guarantee you, he wouldn't get any sales after that. Yeah, it got kind of crazy. So yeah. what I did, okay, so <laughs> how, it, how does that relate to Diecast? All right, so... I actually messaged his um he's got like a instagram page uh for that car like his motorsports like his car hobby stuff okay so i'm waiting to see if we can make a die cast out of that car oh wow okay because in 064 now i'm talking about make a die cast out of that car with the new setup right because right now oh. it's jacked up so he's probably gonna rip all that <laughs> stuff off you know find somebody else maybe even change the color who knows but mm -hmm. or get some designs on there and N064 actually has that cast. Like they got okay. the tooling made, they got that same body kit, the same car, everything. So I mm -hmm. actually messaged him and I'm waiting to see what happens. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it might be like I, I thought he would be interested because maybe it could be like a comeback. And now I've got these die casts and I've got all these eyeballs on my car, you know, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be revived. It's gonna, you know, forget all that drama stuff, hit back here, and check this out, and like boom, die cast. 
Yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely be in for one because Man. he's really a car guy. He's really die hard yeah, car guy. He seems very, he seems very passionate about that side. You know, even though he's a, he's big, you know, into the rap stuff and all that. But hey, he, rap love kinda, cars too. Huh? That's what I'm saying. It's like yeah, everybody. It, it's interesting you know? when when big people like that have like this little hobby that everyone can relate to. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, yeah, we're all car guys. We all drift. Uh die cast i mean of your car that'd be pretty cool you know just things like yeah. that so man I'm, I'm hoping to see if something comes out of that we'll see i'd love to see it too but you know what <laughs> i just realized you know this is really the first time i've done a podcast so i'm you know i'm listening to what you're saying but how did you get into what you're doing you know i didn't ask for, you that how did you get into to model for, cars houston yeah <laughs> tell us about that uh, you know what's funny is i actually have i did a podcast a year ago there's a local guy that was interviewing me because he was like, man, what is this model cars Houston? What, who is this guy? And why is he living in my town selling die cast cars like this at this caliber? Right? Because this was when this was first coming out. Everybody didn't know what the heck this stuff was. Mm -hmm. So about what, four years ago now, something like that four, three and a half years ago, something. Okay. I got my very first blitz tarmac supra you remember that one the silver one yes yep yep I that was my it. very first one <laughs> so one day i was just sitting in my room i was researching like i don't know what i was doing. Oh, oh okay so yeah uh, some may know that i have a super in real life yes i was gonna ask you about your cars next you have all the cars that i, I was, and yeah. some i've owned and all the cars i love you have <laughs> man it it was work to get these cars you know you know work hard play hard right so mm -hmm. <laughs> So I was trying to get a, a, a die cast model cars for the car that I own. Mm -hmm. So I went on eBay. I was like, all right, Toyota Supra die cast, or I put something Toyota Supra 64 scale. And then that popped up. I bought it. I got it. I saw it. I was like, man, what the heck is this? And then I got another one. And then I got a couple more. I was like, all right, something is going on. Like a light bulb went off. And that's when I was like, you know what? Why is this stuff so hard to get over here? Why am I, why do I have to go to eBay every single time to buy this stuff? There's nobody, nobody has a website. Nobody's like a premier distributor. Nobody's like reselling it. Now there were some guys, but they were like more, uh, uh distributors, right? They, they would sell to little businesses that sell die cast and things like that. So I was like, man, it's time. So that's when I started model cars, Houston. I booted up a website. I messaged every single one of those brands, ignition, tarmac, Inno. Uh, who else was out there? T a TLVN. T uh, I messaged all those guys. I was like, look, I'm in the States. I'm a car enthusiast. Mm -hmm. I just found out about diecast like this. Let's work something out. And then that's when it happened. It was literally like a back garage built business. You know, you know what I mean? Like how things start. From yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. literally like that. And so that's when like just things exploded. And I just, man, I went knee deep like neck deep i went neck deep into it and then i started collecting from my own stuff too which uh you know i've got my own car so i i don't know how i was actually gonna do a future video on this like you know the the different types of collectors mm -hmm. you know why do people collect what they collect so you know you've shared your example my example is i only collect based on the cars that i own oh okay so, so that's limited, like my right? yeah that's my that's my threshold i mean it's real tough, David. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> when Ignition dropping some R34s, what? 18 scale. You better like buy R34 next, right? You have Man, to pay one to I, one. I, I do have a. I don't. I'm actually. I don't have any right hand drive cars. I don't. Okay. I, I'm in the mindset of if the, if a left hand drive version exists, then I'm gonna buy a left hand drive version of the car. Okay. That's just the way I thought. All R34, right. not left hand drive. However, if I become it. <laughs> You know, billionaires and billionaires would buy like Paganis and things like that, right? What yeah. I would do, get an R34, convert to left-hand drive, and then drive it over here. That's what I would do. <laughs> Actually, a friend of mine had done that here. He has it's a, a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's a real life thing for sure. Yeah, I, I was I was looking at the car when he was doing it. I'm like, whoa, okay. So someone here in Europe had bought an R34. And mm -hmm. uh, in fact, they, there's a model of his car, uh, uh, John Marie de Rover, a Belgium GTR store. He was converting an R34 GTR <coughs> BN, uh, BNCR R34 yep, into yep, a yep. left hand drive. I think a client in Germany, I believe, someone in there's, it's, it's a company overseas somewhere over there for sure. I forget where Dubai, maybe, or something, something like that. Anyway, something crazy like that. But yeah, there is a company that does it out there. It's it's a pretty penny, though. Are you gonna leave it. it stock? 
I know it's annoying if you go to drive-ins, but you know, uh, drive-throughs, but. You wouldn't, you wouldn't leave it stock. I, it's not, oh, man. I don't know, man. I'm it's kind of like, maybe, maybe. I don't know. I did put up on my Facebook feed that I might be interested in an ER 34. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, you know, what's crazy, man, the prices of ER 30, you know, it's funny. Um, everything is all, you know, con- it's all going back to the 25 year rule, uh, yeah. with the U S yeah, yeah, everything yeah. was pretty cheap a few years ago, but now every know, time man. something becomes available for the uh, U S market, boom. Cause R33 were really cheap um, here. In fact, I almost bought a purple one from a friend of mine who was selling uh, his R33. I regret, yeah, I forgot. I, should, I ever regret I did not buy that oh car. I'm like, yeah, it's an R33. Now that's my favorite Skyline. But he had custom wheels. I mean, it was all you know. It was nicely done, but I don't. I want to have a pure canvas so I can tune it myself if I want to tune it or leave it stock. And Blank. he had uh, a diffuser on the rear and some. I'm like, mm. I kept thinking maybe I should have bought it and just pulled all that stuff <laughs> off. And then just, you know. Yeah, because you can just bump, bump it off, right? Just take it off. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was really a good price. I'm like, I'm sure he sold it. But at that time, I think he was asking about 34 for it. This was in the uh, mid-2000s. That was and a GTR? Kept, huh? Yeah. GTR? GTR. Oh, and man. it didn't have that amount of high kilometers. I think it was like 60-something thousand kilometers. Now. How much do you think that thing is probably worth? Probably uh, it was a V-spec too yeah, as well. By oh, way. yeah. No, that thing. <laughs> no, and leg. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy, man. It's crazy how that stuff is like that. I mean. And all the Supers I didn't buy. Uh, that right there. And that's man. one of my favorite cars. And I, I was stupid. I was like, oh, no. There's something about It's like the color on this one I don't like. I was being so picky. <laughs> on a car that people are like, they don't even care anymore. They just give me one. No. And for the dumbest reason, when I first moved to Europe, I needed a car. Yeah. And I, uh, when I was working uh, in, in in Germany, I was like, you know what? Supers are there. And I, I thought, I'm going to get a Supra. Then I saw the taillight arrangement in Europe. Then I saw that hood scoop. And then I saw those uh, headlight washers. And I said, oh, my God, it looks like a warthog because it's got, like, those headlight washers on it. And it had the hood scoop. And the taillights weren't set the way ours are. It had, like, a, I believe the one of the one of the backup lights was in between uh, the, the two reds and it just annoyed me. I'm like, I don't know. And then fast and the furious came out and I'm like, crap. The oh, price then, then it, that's, that's, that's all that, that's all it yeah. took. That's all she wrote. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, just, oh, uh, but, but going back to the, the, to me about starting everything, I just wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that people had an outlet here in the States to be able to get collector grade model cars. That was the real passion part of it. Like, look, I want, I want to be able to share this with everybody else. Exactly. I want everybody to have a fair chance to get it. They don't have to pay scalper pricing. They're like, oh man, I didn't know that existed. And now you got to pay like double. Like I wanted to give everybody a yeah. fair chance to be able to get in on this, you know, and just make, make a hobby out of it. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and, and it's changed some people's viewpoints on collecting. Like, you know, like, like some of the hot wheels collectors have migrated over. They're like, oh man, what's this stuff? You know, stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. It spawned new collectors. It's also spawned collectors that's like, man, I own an Evo X and some brand made an Evo X and it's the same color, same setup. I mean, you got to have one, right? Like yeah. some, some of those are like a no brainer. Like he's just like, oh yeah, that's my car. Give it to me. I'm done. We're done. You know, just, I don't care what it is. Just give it to me. Yeah. So it's nice to have those interactions with people and just uh, to be able to connect model cars with, uh, with people and, you know, them having something, a mini version of them, of their car with a higher detail, higher quality, you know, whatever, what all that stuff that comes with it. So, and that's what makes the hobby fun, right there. It's so fun, man. Yeah, yeah, it's all you know, it's, it's just like what we're doing right now. We're just, you know, having a powwow about model <laughs> cars, and you know, these things connect us from all walks of life. You have people that are, you know, maybe it's the guy that's fixing the street, and maybe it's the guy that has his own Fortune 500 company, but then you meet in one space, and it's Correct. this one passion. And right. that's, you know, I always, I always find that awesome that people can connect. You, you can always look if you, if without even looking, it's just kind of like a natural connection. You bond with some people you and know? you can build some real strong friendships out of it, <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of like and, T-Pain, right? He's on another level, but he's, a, he's there with the drift community. Yeah. Exactly. Doing regular normal people stuff. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that is just, that is right. That, that makes you feel so good. Just what you said. It makes you feel good to share doesn't it? Yep. that you have this information it. it's also awesome it, i love your store i just if i was about, closer man. i would be getting stuff from you more often it's all good you know? man just send love when you can you know 
Yes. If I come back to America, I know who to hit up. <laughs> Nothing from my personal collection, though. All right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's sold out. Yeah, if it's sold out. yeah, that's another problem I have. Everybody's like, well, will you sell that? Can you sell that? How much? I'm like, no, no, no. Man, now, if I have all the time. What's that? Yeah, all, all the, the time. time. All the time. If it's rare, oh. Those are then, hard. Yeah. And sometimes I have rare things I will sell, but then when you tell them the price, oh. There's no, no, but I'm the, like, the, yeah, ones but, that, the ones that I struggle with is I don't care how much it is, just name me a number and I'll buy it. I'm like, okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm keeping this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so landing the plane, how can people yes, find okay. you? Where can they connect with you? I mean, where are you at typically? Well, I sent you my uh IG account, which I rarely use. Okay. You know, I, I, you know, you can always hit me up on uh diecast exchange. I'm uh D and D land there. Yeah, but, I'll put that uh, in the thing. I'll put IG that in the account. description at the bottom. Yeah, I'll put that in the uh Instagram at the description so they can just see what you're up to. Are you taking yeah. diecast? You got diecast stuff on your IG or what? Uh yeah, I yeah, that's all I that's all I put up there. In fact, the only reason I have IG is John Lambert from Lamley suggested that I connect with him there, and that's the only reason I even set up an account. And so I set it up. I'm like, I don't really use all this stuff. You know, I don't have uh Twitter and all that stuff. I just use IG sometimes, and yeah, it's yeah, rare. Sure. I'm so I hope people don't think I'm ignoring them. I'm just not on there that much. <laughs> you know? No, for sure. It's all good, all good. Well, uh David pleasure man thank you for coming on this very first episode brother i really appreciate it my pleasure as well yeah man hey and and i think uh, as as time goes on let's connect again maybe do a follow-up uh podcast video something absolutely Uh, absolutely yeah awesome absolutely awesome well thank you very much guys i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we will see you on the next one peace all right take care man man. all right all right bye bye bye